What's up guys, Kosho here at Elite FTS with the legend himself, Dave Tate. And obviously you guys know if you've been following my journey that I coach a lot of athletes for high school lacrosse, high school strength and conditioning, kind of fell into that, that realm, really enjoy it. Uh, but one of the questions that a lot of the kids and even coaches come and ask me is, how do I build explosiveness? Once again, big topic. A lot of ways we can go with this. Just want to get his input if you're talking to a coach who's trying to explain that with his athletes or an athlete who's watching this, some other variables and things to consider uh, when you are trying to get quote unquote more explosive. And like, what does that even mean, right? Like we have, yeah. So let's get into it. All right. So when you're talking explosiveness, right? And that can also mean um, change of direction, it can mean a lot of those things. So if it's a coach or an athlete and it's explosiveness, then the first place I'm going to look is, well, what are they doing? What is the sport? Mm -hmm. How much of the explosive plyometric type training is just happening in practice, right? Because a lot of the things they may already be doing in practice, mm -hmm. they have drills in practice, they have skipping, bounding. Some of this could be part of the warm up, some of it could be part of the drills. Some of it can just be part of what they're doing, right. right? So if they're already doing a lot of that bounding type of stuff, there's no need to put it in, mm -hmm. right? Now, if you're talking explosiveness, that's in the weight room, you know, explosive strength or people would call it dynamic effort type of strength. Then there's there's other factors that kind of fall into that as well. Where if it's somebody that's been training for 10 or 15 years, they have a solid base, it's a little bit easier to implement. Mm -hmm. If you're talking kids or beginners and stuff like that, they may not even have enough eccentric strength to be able to load, to be able to have that static to dynamic contraction mm -hmm. from that. So. If I'm going to use the box squat as an example, you know, you would sit on there, rest, not completely rest, right? So there's the first caveat. Do they, can, can they understand what that means? Right, right. Right, to sit there but still keep 50, 60% tension and then go from that static into that dynamic. Mm -hmm. Do they even have the skills in the muscle coordination to do that? Do they have the muscle coordination to actually eccentrically sit in that position? You know, do they have the eccentric strength to sit into a, like a pause squat, then to come out of the pause squat? So that's the first factor because some don't because they're mm -hmm. just weak. They just need to become stronger. Right, right. If they become stronger, they naturally become mm -hmm. more explosive. Mm -hmm. You know, a stronger person is more explosive to a certain point. You right. know, after you get to that point, then you're starting to deal with intention. Like what is their intention when they're doing the lift? Are they just lifting it? or they are using compensatory acceleration or they are applying their maximum force as that comes up. They may or may not know what that means because it's never been coached to them before. So you can say up faster, they don't know what the fuck that means. Mm -hmm. You know, or you say up faster then their technique kind of like goes to shit. Right. You know, so if, if you take it way down to a beginner, the easiest way that I've found to be able to get their mind to connect with what we're talking about is to put a little bit, say if it's a squat, put a little bit of band on the bar. Not a lot, we're talking like a mini band. Micro mini band probably won't work because it might be less than what the bar weighs, but like a mini band. And then as soon as, and it can be a box, have them on a box. Have them stand up with a mini band. The first thing they're gonna do is get tight. Right. As soon as they walk out, they're gonna be tight because the band's yep. kind of like wiggling them around a little mm -hmm. bit. That's the first thing and one of the hardest thing that is to teach an athlete how to get tight before they actually do the lift, how to make sure their core's tight, their back's tight, their lats tight. You can say lats tight all you want. They don't have lats. They don't know what that means, right? right. right? They haven't developed a mind muscle connection to be able to know. You mm -hmm. can say abs tight. They don't know what that means. You know, they, it's a, it, now you put that on there, everything's tight, mm. right? And then you can tactfully kind of say, see how this feels, see how this feels. Then if you have them sit on a box, you know, statically sit there, and then if they try to stand up as they normally would, mm -hmm. they may not be able to stand up because of the tension that's right. pulling them back down. So, so let's say they come up halfway, they sit right back down. The next time they go to stand up, they stand up with more force. Yeah, yeah. There, you know, mm -hmm. that's what we're talking about, right, right. right? So just as a teaching tool, the bands can sub and greatly teach that because it's like, oh shit, I need to push. No other option. <laughs> with force, right? So then you can think of how you can implement that in the compound lifts that you have in your training that you want to be able to build that compensatory acceleration with. Mm -hmm. Probably shouldn't be every lift in the training, but it, I do believe it should be some because there is correspondence that's gonna carry right. over to that. If anything, it's still gonna teach them that tightness uh -huh. and the difference between lifting something with force 
compared to lifting something with more control and there's going to there's benefits to both right they should know the difference between the two mm -hmm. now so being a high school uh, strength and conditioning coach would you recommend doing something like that at a high school level <laughs> It depends on a lot of shit. Right. I mean, if it's like one coach and 50 kids and it's a clusterfuck in the weight room, that's yeah. just going to make it more of a clusterfuck because right. they're going to be using the bands to snap each other with. <laughs> you know, that you, this is, you got, they're high school kids, man. <laughs> yeah, you got to think that's shit true, through, that's true. right? So you got to think it through. You know, So on that one, it may fall more into you know, what, what's being done on this field. You know, do they right. need the explosiveness in the first place? Right, is that should be the cornerstone of everything. There's mm -hmm. a needs analysis. Mm -hmm. Do they need this or do they just need to be stronger? At that level, in most cases, they just need to be stronger. Be strong. They don't even have body weight strength. They can't do chin ups. They can't do push ups. They can't do all this other shit. I would focus way more on that okay. than I would dynamic strength, explosive strength. They don't even have fucking relative strength. Right. You know, so I would build that relative strength, which then can be implemented in a group mm -hmm. a little more, more so than that. Now, if they are further along, then I would segment the groups. Okay. You know, and here's the, you know, the higher end lifters that are going to be over here. Right. Teach them how, really teach them how to dial this in right. And then the other kids are going to watch and they're going to see them. They kind of, you know this, you've worked with high school kids. So they're, they have certain degree of aspiration and they look up to some of the other mm -hmm. kids that are stronger they're going to see what they're doing and then they're going to mirror what they do so if you can get the best ones to do it the best right. then there's a trickle down effect that kind of comes from that For which sure. makes it easier the worst thing you want to do is to try to go to the bottom end and try to implement there right right because that doesn't trickle up it's kind of how we have it with the weight room at the high school it's actually just separated by we have some of the older kids you know more advanced lifters for that group over on one side and there's like the intermediate and beginners but i'm just thinking in the back of my head you know maybe some of these older guys i can introduce some of these more advanced concepts to in their training journey and have you know like you said three groups kind of set up and then the younger guys looking around what's going on for that environment and kind of like, okay eventually i can get there and yeah. if i can nail this down um but yeah i wouldn't recommend like he said probably just taking high schoolers and throwing bands and like he said they're probably just going to be whacking each other with them first and it's going to it's hard enough just getting training groups yeah oh it's yeah it's like hurdling cattle all day long um but i do see some of those kids and i work with some of them outside who want to get after it year round who want to really put effort into those types of training so it's good to kind of have in the back of my mind i really like that band concept just like you said because that it forces them to have to do that pretty quickly versus trying to just say it to them and they don't have some sort of band resistance yeah. then well you're, you're teaching them body awareness and body control mm. right so in in some sports they may need that fast explosive start you know in some alignment coming off the line you right. know but not all the time they may not need it every time. Sometimes they need to have more controlled static position from right. the start. They need to know, technically they're gonna be taught that by their skill coaches mm -hmm. on whatever that is. But muscularly, if they can learn how to control that, mm -hmm. you know, then it's gonna make what they're doing there tactfully even more efficient because then they understand here's tight to explode. Right. You know, here's static to stay static. You know, there's, there's the don't, they need to understand the ability to display force and I do like uh, the example you used where it assess what's going on in practice and make sure you're not either doing the same thing in the weight room sometimes I feel like we get a little blurred vision as coaches where we almost blend the two together where we have to look at okay what's being done here what's being done in the weight room and how we can complement each other more that way because I've seen and I was even been a part of it as an athlete, right? Where we're doing all these drills and then we replicate the same thing in the weight room and you're wondering why you're not getting any better. So it's just kind of finding that balance and assessing everything holistically versus uh, almost maybe separate, not separating the two because we, we kind of want to do that in a sense, but complementing each other better. Yeah, 100% because it's this worst case scenario and it won't happen. Let's say you teach a kid that everything has to be explosive because you know, everything, everything that they do. And then, you know, if it's a wrestler, sometimes it needs to be explosive. Sometimes they have to use the opponent's force against them. Right. You know, so it, it's absorbing yeah. their opponent's force to be able to have the advantage to be mm -hmm. able to spin or move or whatever it's going to be. And you, 
you, they they need to know the difference. Right, right. Yep. You when, know, when to that. use it, when to not use it, yes. how to leverage it. Um, but yeah, hopefully that helped you guys. If whether you're an athlete or a coach, I, I really like diving more into the concepts of being explosive, what that actually means, and how to either coach an athlete by using what we talked about here, or even yourself. So there's way more than just the three exercise or five exercises to get explosive. It's a little bit deeper of a topic. And I know for a fact that I'm gonna be utilizing the stuff that we had said. Uh, so thanks for just giving me your, your two cents on it.